Now is a very good time to be a Linux user looking for a smartphone. There are at least four different options to get Linux in your pocket available right now or being worked on. And in this video, we're going to go through them right now on Linux Lounge. To open us up with, we have a phone that is by far the most driven by ethics and uh, for people who truly want a freedom respecting phone and probably the most high-end truly Linux phone and uh, of course this is the Libram 5. However, coming in at uh, $749 to pre-order, it's also by far the most expensive. But let's take a step back. What is unique to the Librem 5? Well, purism and no strangers to making ethical hardware. Before the Librem 5, they put out a variety of freedom respecting laptops, desktops and other hardware. And the Librem 5 is no different in terms of being completely re freedom respecting. It's designed around hardware that is as open as possible, hence the high price tag. Uh, the Librem 5 uses mostly hardware from companies that are willing to share the source code for it. Additionally, the operating system that the Librem 5 comes with by default is totally devoid of proprietary software. All of this makes the Librem 5, much like Purism's other products, perfect for people who want totally freedom respecting hardware and software regardless of how much it costs. More than that though I think the Librem 5 uh, is probably the most high-end and polished truly Linux phone. Uh, the Librem 5's operating system is completely designed for the hardware it runs on and developed in-house by Purism whereas other Linux phones don't necessarily have a default operating system. Um, but as well as that, the Libra 5 offers the highest end hardware of the two truly Linux phones that are being developed. And by truly Linux phones, I mean phones that uh, natively run the mainline Linux kernel. Um, the Libra 5 offers a quad core CPU, 3GB of RAM, 32GB of storage, a 1440p display, and a 13 megapixel camera. Uh, these specs, of course, obviously nothing uh, close to high end proprietary smartphones in terms of performance, but it is better than the other Linux smartphones' offerings, and uh, that camera is quite impressive. Plus, the hardware is totally open source. It's just whether you're willing to pay for it. Well, next up we have the Vola phone, and it's not strictly a Linux phone. In fact, by default, it ships with a uh, completely open source flavor of Android. However, it is worth talking about since there will be an official version that ships with Ubuntu Touch by default. So in that way, it sort of is a Linux phone. Uh, but the company behind the Volaphone have said that they're committed to uh, providing, you know, sort of this very much openness and it'll be very easy to port Linux to the phone. So that's quite promising. Now let's talk about what you get with the Volaphone. Well, I sort of see the Volaphone as being quite a good value phone. Uh, it's currently priced at um, £313 to pre-order on Kickstarter. And uh, for that, you get a octa-core CPU, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, a 16 megapixel camera, and an impressively large 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So all of that is actually better than the likes of the uh, Libra 5 or whatever. And uh, all of this is on a phone that you can choose to have a totally open source version of Android on, or Ubuntu Touch, and I think they're even working on a port of Sailfish OS. Sounds like quite an interesting deal for someone who just wants a Linux phone and isn't bothered about free software and hardware. For our next phone we have one that uh, I'm honestly the most excited for, the Pine Phone. Now the way I see it, the Pine Phone is the community driven option but also the budget option. The reason I say this is the Pine Phone has no official operating system only a sort of a variety of community developed ones. Additionally, the price of the phone is only $150, and for that price, you get yourself some pretty workable hardware. You get a quad-core CPU, 1440p screen, 16 gigabytes of storage, two gigabytes of RAM, and a maybe slightly disappointing five megapixel camera. Uh, overall, I do see that as a 
pretty price competitive option uh, you sort of compare to uh, budget Android phones uh, that are currently on the market especially when you consider that the Pine phone will run Linux which will likely have far better performance than Android depending on which flavor of Linux you go with However, the downsides to the Pine Phone are, as I see it, that it may not necessarily be for the faint of heart, or for people that just want something that works, uh, or not necessarily anyway, uh, given that the phone doesn't have an official OS. Uh, however, the advantages are quite clear. This phone is uh, more for people who want quite a budget-friendly option, or tinkerers who want to buy into a community and try lots of different things with their phone which the Pine Phone already has many, many different Linux distributions you can try out, and it's not even officially released yet. Um, but I do kind of also see this as a good option for people who just want a Linux phone for a uh, reasonable price, and that it will do very well. Now, this last suggestion for getting a Linux phone might seem a bit strange, but when you think about it, there are many Android phones already on the market that have Linux ported to them, and many of them can be had for bargain prices. In fact, many of these devices, when bought used, are actually cheaper than a new Linux phone and have better specifications. Plus, you can kind of see it as recycling in some way. Um, I can't give a comprehensive list of devices that are good to buy to run mobile Linux, but what I can say is that most of the devices on the um, UbiPort Ubuntu Touch promoted devices page are probably pretty good. So those devices are, you know, phones like the Fairphone 2, the Nexus 5, the OnePlus One. Uh, the only one I have experienced with on that list is the Nexus 5, which I'm currently willing to vouch for. Um, but with that being said, I do think that buying a Android phone will be a pretty good option for uh, people who want a Linux phone because they can ha be had for bargain prices. And, you know, many people will have these phones already. And there certainly are a lot of Android phones that can run Linux. And with that said, that's my list of options for getting a Linux-powered smartphone. There aren't a huge amount of smartphones that run Linux right now, at least not uh, straight out of the factory. But with any luck, we should see an increase in the amount of smartphones that run Linux to come out. And hopefully some of those even become very widely commercially available, like the BQ Aquarius and other devices in the past. And hopefully, with any luck, we should see, you know, Linux phones start to be offered as part of contracts and uh, other such uh, surfaces like that and start to see Linux phones fall into the hands of the everyday user. But with that being said, I think that's it for today's video. I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe and check out my channel on LBRY. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Oh,